I, I want to pause for just a second because uh, the reason we were, my brother and I wanted to do this show was, like I said, recent news, you got um, several cele- several celebrities we, we know and, and we adore have had uh, incidents with uh, suicide. Um, some of the, um, the, the celebrity pageant uh, young lady, you, you can go on the list and I'm sure, I'm sure we, we know and identify uh, people in our own lives that, that have thought about suicide. Let's stop for a second and say the, the importance of this interview was to let you, the reason we, we, we reached out to Dr. Terrence was to say mm-hmm. to you that you are important. Let's let's right. that important. Let's stop right now. You are right. important. You count and you do matter. The reason you are you are here for a purpose, even if you hadn't figured it out yet, you're mm. just you living and you being here adds purpose. You are the purpose. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Johnson. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, unfortunately, my, my, my identical twin brother couldn't join us today. Uh, he had a mishap at work he needed to take care of. Um, but I really appreciate you taking your time out of your busy day. Uh, no problem. Okay. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't mind, um, can you just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, before uh, we, and then we'll get into why, why we, uh, we brought you here today. Okay. All right. I'm uh, Dr. Terrence Johnson. I'm co-founder of Our Progress LLC. Uh, that's in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, my background is mental health. So I've been a therapist, a uh, counselor uh, for a number of years. I'm a licensed professional counselor, but I've also been a professor. Um, I taught at Mississippi College for a number of years in the doctor professional counseling program where I got my uh, doctorate degree at too. So um, I'm familiar with um, mental health issues, um, even doing community work. A lot of my work started with adolescents. So I started with um, kids that were in youth court, uh, which used to be called the AOP program way back in the day. But so I, I worked a lot with adolescents and their families and schools and all that. So I was at school a lot. <laughs> And uh, I did college counseling too. So I used to work at Jackson State for a while. I worked in the career center for a year uh, at, as a career coordinator. And I did the career fairs. And then I worked at the Tosh Norman Center for about three and a half years. So I was, so yeah, I know all about the I love and, and Jackson State. So I used to work there for a number of years. So, um, so yeah, but just trying to help people. That's basically what. I'm really passionate about, but people really connecting to their life purpose because I think that everybody got a purpose. And I think when we know that and operate in that, it betters our life. Um, and when we don't have that, then we have a struggle because it's a struggle for us to really, you know, figure out what we want to do or what we're here for. So, okay, before we, because you and I, you and I, you and I have had 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 the fortunate opportunity to speak, and so I've heard you talk about. Um, life per- about your purpose and, and the fact that if you don't know your purpose, it contributes highly to your mental mental stability. Before we get right. into that, I want to um, also shout out Jackson State because Calden and I had had an opportunity to work with Jackson State as well, uh, besides, besides ATM. Um, we, we worked with the Natasha Norman Center, with, with, that, with that counseling center as well, uh, mm-hmm. with some uh, uh, battered, battered why they had a couple of battered wife wife events and we 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 hosted those events some of their events so uh i just want to do a shout out to that center over there they're doing a great work but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but um you like a, like a, the point i just mentioned earlier a second ago you you talk a lot about knowing your purpose 
I'd mm-hmm. like for you to elaborate on the significance of knowing your purpose. How do you know your purpose and how does that affect someone's mental health? Yeah. So for me, I, I look at, I'm a big visual person. So I look at life as kind of like a journey. And uh, I think for a lot of us, when we grow up, we have certain things that we're really passionate about, we really want to do. And then life happens or people around us, our environment, kind of chip away at that it's like oh you can't do that or we don't do that or you're gonna move away or you're gonna so we kind of constrict the thing that we really passionate about but really we're created to do because it might not look like what our parents did what our family members did uh what society tell us we could do so we kind of box ourselves in as we go grow older and then we only do what we've seen and I think a lot of times that's what keeps people from achieving their purpose because their purpose might be outside of what the environment tells them they could do. Just like you just say, for instance, like Barack Obama or something like that. If it was, certainly there were people around him that told him what he could and couldn't do over his lifespan. But if he listened to that, he wouldn't have been president. So it's a lot of things that our purpose is not necessarily going to make a lot of people comfortable with us because sometimes it's outside of the things that they would think they could do. So a lot of times, not that people hate on us, it's the fact that we might do some things that they don't have a reference point for. And that's why it's hard for them to accept it. But then if we try and just be what other people want us to be, then that makes us like resent other people and, and kind of have other issues, or we might get depressed, or we might get sad, not necessarily just because of, oh, I want to be sad or depressed, like, oh, I'm trying to do this thing, I really want to, you know, create something, do this, start this business, but everything around me is saying, like, you can't do that, and then I start to think, I can't do that, and that's not for me to do, so it's kind of like that reverse, almost kind of like reverse engineering to block you from what you're really passionate about doing, and it, it might not be intentional. It just people see the world from their eyes. So people can not see the world from my eyes. So they what they tell me is just from what they can see. And if if I don't really know my world that well, I can't really um, I can't move forward because it's going to be some time that people might disagree with what I want to do. OK, well, well how, how do you get the strength or vision or how do you uh, to, to move forward in, in, in your passion? Or, and how do you identify that? So one thing I'm, I'm really big on is exposure. If, if you're not exposed to certain things, then it's harder for you to move forward into it. So just like if only people that I know look like me, talk like me, grew up with me, only thing I know is what, what they tell me and what I hear. But say if I take a trip or I do an internship or I go off to school and I meet new people, I have these different experiences, now the world opens up a little different for me. Or like now you can actually do things online where you can meet people that's in different places and have conversations. So you don't necessarily have to travel to meet new people, but you got to be exposed to the stuff you're really passionate about. So if you want to like start a business, then you need to start talking to people that do that because they're the ones that are going to give you real honest feedback about what you want to do, what you, you know, ideas or whatever. Cause you ask like your mom or something like that, like this is what I want to do. She's like, Oh, that's good, son. You know, <laughs> but she's not going to have something for you to really help. You know what I'm saying? And there's not a place. So it's like, you can't fault her for that, but you have to connect with people that are doing the things that you want to do. Um, and I think that's the barrier for a lot of us because some of us don't have access to that. Um, well, yeah. Even with the internet, I mean, even with this social media age where, where, where you can Google just about anything or YouTube. Anything, yeah. Um, yeah. Is, is, shouldn't people now be using, using those resources to kind of guide them towards their, uh, their purpose? Even if I say I can't, there's nobody in my circle that that does that. Okay, yeah. I don't know anybody that does that. Um, yeah. What about using 
using the internet or YouTube to find things or find people that or find topics. You may I, I may never talk to um, um, Nick Cannon. Yeah, who, yeah. Who, who, who has produced several television shows. Yeah, uh, if I want to be a, a television producer, I can Google him. I can Google him and I can watch several shows that he has produced to find out mm-hmm. about television production. Yeah, yeah. So so that's one way. Um, the other thing is, is certain like meetup networking type things you can do online. And there's one thing, particularly when you were talking, it made me think about it. And it's something that I've been using lately to connect with new people. It's called Lunch Club. And it's kind of a way for you to meet people in different parts of the world that do different things. But it's kind of based on what you're interested in. And they kind of just ask you a couple of questions every day. And um, and then they kind of pick people for you to meet. And you just get on just like how we doing now and you get on a Zoom call and talk. And it might, it might be somebody you never would come across uh, in your day-to-day life. But it's just like, oh, I'm meeting somebody. Oh, they doing something similar to me. Or just like what you're saying with YouTube, you can find a lot of stuff um, that can help point you toward a direction. But it's some some of it is like getting online, but some of it is just kind of those, I don't say random moments, but it's kind of like those like chance meetings with people and you just have a conversation. It's like, oh, this is what you want to, oh, I know somebody. And sometimes just being in the right place at the right time uh, too. So, so yeah, that could be something. Okay. Well, with, with you're familiar with Jackson, um, right? So you, you know uh, what the challenges that we're facing right now with, with the crime mm-hmm. rate and, um, and how things are increasing. The only reason I bring it up is because uh, mental, mental health, suicide rates, uh, people's attitude towards um, the respect or appreciation for, other, for the next man or for the next person. Um, can you speak to that? How, how, how can we, what, what, what can we do uh, as individuals to, to, to turn that around or increase our own mental health going through, going through this? I think one thing, so a lot of times with mental health, people think about like how you feel and what you think about. But if you think about a person as far as their whole person, it's more of their well-being. And so our mental health is part of it, but also like other things too. So you got to think about like our physical health. Um, you got mental, uh, emotional, but you got spiritual. You got like relational. You got spiritual and then I, like environment too. And then what we do is for like career. So like all those things affect what we feel or how we react to certain things so you just take jackson so we know a lot of people they're gonna be low SES, so that mean they got financial issues um then we know relational relation relationally you know you don't have a lot of you know solid families you have single parent households then you have, as far as career-wise, there's not that many job opportunities. Um, and so then if you look at it in like all these different pieces, you see why the things happen in Jackson because people have a lot of unmet needs. And if people don't have their needs met, you know, in a positive way, they'll find another way to get their needs met. And sometimes they might not turn out the best way but it's because the environment is like if you in certain settings, you just like if if people in Jackson had more access to things or better job opportunities or whatever, then certain things that people do as far as crime, like robberies and all that, it wouldn't be a need because some of those needs would be net. I mean, you know, yeah, those needs would be met, but because people don't have access to that and they don't know another option to do it the right way. You know, like, well, look, I might have to do this today or I might have to sell these drugs today or I might whatever, cause I need this money today. Nobody else going to give me the money. I can't really go get a job like I want to. So it's like those things kind of create 
almost like a bubble where it's harder to to really break out of because it's the sources like the resources that's built to come in there is not enough people so just like people say okay we need more therapists or whatever but that can only help with the management of what's going on in the day to day but they need resources and things that can come in because they need money they need jobs they need education they need all of that and if you don't have ways to address that, it's harder then to say like, hey, well, we're going to work on crime because it's more like a, a whole systematic thing. So it's, it's trying to it's trying to get people in place that actually understand what's really going on and move the funding towards that way. And some of that is kind of like a higher up thing. <laughs> And I, like you know, like some of that is like well, my pay grade, but it's it's not a simple answer to it because it's been done a certain way to leave a certain section of people excluded. Okay, so what if I'm I, I'm I am the excluded people because uh, the suicide rates are, are, are really high and. Uh, and, and, and some of my family members come to mind when I when I when I when I as I'm thinking about this and myself, because uh, mm. I'm not so far removed from life and its issues as as well. Right. Um, so how do I, as an individual, look past? Is there is there a method you suggest or, or one would use to internally look past my my external situations that are unfavorable to to to, to possibly. Uh, exceed or supersede those 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 challenges so i think the first point would be perspective so all of it like that I, I did talk about myself myself it's been points in my life where if my perspective was in a different place it would have stopped me from going forward so one thing is the challenges that we face they might not change tomorrow Right. What we can change is our perspective of them and then how we then start to address how we deal with ourselves. Because a lot of times what makes our situations worse is that we then turn to other things that make our, our ability to make a choice harder. So Sometimes we get into alcohol say, and drugs. Say, say, say that again, because I think that was important. You say uh, the, the ability for us to make the right choice can be affected because of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, just like what you were saying with, you know, suicide and all of that. When people feel like they don't have a choice, then that's when they start to give up or they're not exposed to alternate choices. So just going back when I was working at the Latash Norman Center, like I took students to every hospital in Jackson that would think about committing suicide. I rode in ambulance with them. I rode in a police car with them. I stayed there, made sure they got checked in, talked to their parents and all that kind of stuff. But the main thing was either they said, I didn't, I don't know what I'm here for. Nobody cares about me or whatever. And so it's like, or they might have done something and they feel like, well, I made a mistake. This is the end of the world for me, but it's their perspective. But if nobody is there or they don't have any access to other options, then that's when people might feel like, well, I don't, it's no need for me to be here anymore or nobody care if I'm here or not and all that. So then that goes into, you know, doing alcohol and drugs and taking and finding ways to escape our feelings and what we feel, which then makes it harder for us to then make a choice because then we get trapped in the addiction of that okay. or the addiction of like um, even relationships. Sometimes we get in relationships, not necessarily because the best thing for us, but it's an escape from what we got going on. Okay. Right, right, right. Well, I, I want to pause for just a second because uh the reason we were, my brother and I wanted to do this show was, like I said, recent news. You got um, several cele several pe celebrities we we know and and 
we adore have had uh, incidents with uh, suicide. Um, some of the, um, the, the celebrity pageant uh, young lady, you, you can go on the list and I'm sure, I'm sure we, we know and identify uh, people in our own lives that, that have thought about suicide. Just stop for a second and say the, the importance of this interview was to let you, the reason we, we, we reached out to Dr. Terrence was to say to you that you are important. Let's let's right. make that important. Let's stop right now. You are right. important. You count and you do matter. The reason you are you are here for a purpose, even if you hadn't figured it out yet, you're mm. just you living and you being here adds purpose. You are the purpose. You are the purpose. Your breath, your life is the is is the purpose. So you may not know if you're going to be an artist or if you want to be a, a doctor or like he mentioned, the president, you can be whatever you can imagine you can be just because you you be, because you exist. That is your purpose. The fact that you exist, whether you believe in God, Allah, or whomever, the one that created you, the fact that you're here says to says you are important. So that that in itself should be your focus every day that you are important and make and make your steps out of that birth out of that daily. So we just want to that's that was that that's the importance of this conversation. So like Dr. Terrence mentioned, knowing your purpose um, and things like that. I'm say, suggesting to you that know your purpose out of the fact that you exist. It's, it's, it's important. Don't just pass it over to say, I, oh, I, I, I exist. He exists too. Yes, that's important. We all exist and we all coexist. That is the purpose. That alone is the purpose. So um, you you are valuable and worth, and worth. I just had to stop for a second, Doc. Um, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, you good. No, nah, that was good. That, that, no, nah, that was good. But it, 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 made, it made me think of something else that I wanted to make sure I shared off of that. I think a lot of that, which you what you just said, it comes from us comparing ourselves to other people. Exactly. And it's easy to do that because we live in a culture where, you know, we got Instagram, we got Facebook, we got TikTok, we got all that kind of stuff. And we seeing all this stuff day after day of people taking trips and doing this and all that kind of stuff. And then we looking like, oh, well, I ain't got dead. And I can't go here and look what I drive and look what they just got and all this kind of stuff. And so then you, you devalue yourself and what you bring to the table every day. And it's like we get addicted to it. So that can to contribute to it. And that's one thing I wanted to make a point of what you were talking about with like the celebrity suicides or whatever. A lot of people, they get it confused with people's personal, like they social media persona and then them as a person. And we feed a lot more into crafting our brand or our profile, our virtual self that people don't really know us or we don't have space to be us. So then we have to be on all the time. Yeah. And people look to us to like have the answers or inspiration or whatever. But sometimes the people that actually have like the most, you know, the nice energy or they always have encouraging word, they might need it back to them the most. But a lot of people think that you got it together. Oh, you got it. And so sometimes when you see people just like, Miss Miss USA, people say, like, oh, she's beautiful. And she's doing all this stuff. She's on TV. But that doesn't mean that that was fully her. That was part of her. Part of her, right. But she was she was human too. And that doesn't mean she had she didn't have issues and problems. And I think that's the thing that people don't understand that yeah, you can do great things, but that doesn't mean that those great things really impact you. They might impact other people, but it might not feed you the same way. Right. All right. Or, or problems are, are are not separate from you because you you've accomplished something. Uh, you, you you your feet don't stop itching because you've acquired a million dollars. Right. That sounds lame, but or, or silly, but yeah, your ears don't stop getting cold because you you drive a, a Lamborghini. Um, you, yeah. you face the same problems that people face every every day, no matter who you are. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. And I, I it, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Having, having things, my point is having things and stuff uh, with, with us being this Instagram, being on all the time kind of world, being on doesn't make you not human or, 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 or not susceptible to life's mm -hmm. problems. Yeah. Yeah. And some of we get into role, like for me, I would say I'm a recovering people pleaser because that's that's where I live. Like I was always doing for other people, sacrificing, making sure everybody else was okay. But I want to make sure I was okay. And I said, you know, if you do for people or people can rely on you, depend on you, they're going to continue to do it. Um, because you teach people how, how you want to be treated. So like if somebody call you and you're going to pick up every time, they're going to expect that. And so you kind of lock yourself into somewhere. It's like, man, I need some downtime or whatever. And I think that's why it's important to have boundaries too with people because you need a boundary so you can have space for yourself. And people think that that's, you know, selfish or like, oh, you know, I want to be able to help people. But if you really want to help people, you got to have boundaries so then you can recharge or you can even like figure out where you are. Like you might not be in a good place, but if you're going, 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 you can't really tell that because you just so used to moving around. You're not really getting a good sense of where you are. At this point, what would you say to a, a troubled youth that's thinking right now of committing suicide or to uh, if you had, could have uh, had a conversation? I know it's kind of broad in general now to think about it. Uh, if you were talking to Miss Miss USA, if you had an opportunity to speak to her before the, the tragic, you know, before her, her tragic demise or, or just a regular troubled youth that's uh, contemplating suicide. Um, I know that's broad after asking the question, but I, I, I can't think of how, 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 how to narrow that down. Um, what, what yeah. I, well, well, I think, I think the, the first thing would be, and something that you said earlier is like, you know, you matter, but even, even past that is that whatever pain is valid, I think that's what frustrates a lot of people when they're hurting people try and minimize the hurt dismiss that yeah and and so for me it would be whatever you feel that's okay to feel that but there is a tomorrow and it is a next step to it and you do have options and i think that's the thing because in the moment, the pain is so much and people might miss it and say like, oh, well, you feel better. Oh, cheer up. Oh, whatever. And it's like, I want you to understand where I'm at. It's not necessarily to fix it because you can't necessarily fix how people feel. But if you acknowledge how they feel, then they, they, they get a sense of being seen and heard. So a lot of times, when I had students or clients or whatever come in and that's where they were, I would acknowledge that because they probably weren't going to tell me exactly what all they were feeling, right. but I could get a sense based on what they looked like, how they were talking or whatever. And say like, Hey, you seem like you're going through a lot or whatever, or you hurting and that's okay. And if you don't want to tell me all of why you hurt, that's okay too. But just to acknowledge, like, I see it and I hear it. And if you want me to help with that, it's some help, you know, that you can have and all that. Because a lot of times what people do, they then start to, like, you say, like, well, if people do tell them something, like, hey, I've been thinking about this or whatever. Oh, and what do you think about that? Oh, we go to church. and Oh, whatever. Da, 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 da. And then they start to just over talk them and not really just let them express like this where I'm at so then you could help them move forward with it so I would say the message that I would tell anybody is one you know we're all on a journey and just because where you are doesn't match with somebody else doesn't mean that you lost or that you're behind or your journey 
is not worth keeping going forward. And I think the road would clear out, but we all have bumps in the road. We have issues and challenges and crisis situations. We lose people that are close to us, but that doesn't mean that our life has to end because it seems like other things have stopped happening for you. You know, some of the things that are clearing out is kind of preparing you to go and have a better life, even though it doesn't seem like that right now. So some things have to adjust and change shift for us to move forward. So, right, right. Something sometimes uh, we're not our past is is not separate from us. It's right. It's it's, it's our bridge or, or our connection to where, where where we're going or our future. Um. Yeah, that that that's 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 awesome. That's positive. Yeah. So um, I did. So you're saying I, if if we we have that relative or that loved one that's that's going through, just identify with them, at least I acknowledge or see them. The, or so they know you see them or you see the pain that that they're going through. Yeah, yeah, and then there's some other option, like if they they're really at that point or they might not have verbalized it to you, but you think they might need somebody. I mean, you have the National Suicide Hotline they could reach out to. Um, but then if you feel like they're in that place right now, or they talk to you like, hey, I, I'm thinking about this. I got, they got means to do something to themselves. Then, you know, you can call, you know, 911 and kind of be on the line with them until somebody comes. Or if you kind of in the more direct vicinity, uh, you got a relationship with them where they would maybe go with you, go to the hospital or whatever like that, so you can get them admitted. Usually they do like a 48 hour hold there, where they kind of like evaluate them, you know, monitor them, you know, give them time to rest or recuperate. And sometimes they might keep them longer than that, but um, those are some options that people have um, because sometimes people, they want you to help, but they might not verbally say it. So some of it might be like, hey, you want me to help? You want me to call somebody? You want me to, you know, whatever. And sometimes they might be like, yeah. Or sometimes they're like, well, I don't know. And, you know, so you can just be there, but you do have options that you can do. So you do have some number to call or some things to refer to them. But if if you feel like they're in that state where, like, you don't feel comfortable hanging up the phone or getting off FaceTime or whatever until a uh, next step, then it might be best to call like 911 and then, you know, wait on the phone till somebody comes and check on them, whatever like that. So, um, so yeah, but I would, I would say just for anybody, if it's, I think just in general, this has been something that I've been trying to do the last couple of years, if you think about somebody and somebody that come to your mind, like, Hey, you know, I think I might need to check on them, call them, just call, you know, or it might be a text or it might be whatever. Like, hey, I was thinking about, you know, you know, it hadn't been a while. I didn't want to check in with you, see how you were doing. Uh, Cause you just don't never know because a lot of times, like, like we've been talking about those people, they really do a lot for a lot of people and they use the one calling everybody else they might be the one that need to call and just check in and say like, Hey, how you doing? And like, you know, I have some people that do that for me, even though a lot of people, you know, look, look to me and say, like, Oh, you got the answer. Oh, you do this and all that kind of stuff. I got, I got certain people that call me like, Hey, T, how you doing? And I was like, I'm doing all right. Or sometimes like, I ain't doing, you know, and, but I'm able to just be human and be like, if I'm not doing all right, I'm not doing all right, but I got somebody that'll let me be in that space. And that's what we all need. We just need some people that they don't need anything from us. They don't need like guidance from us all the time. We need some people that's gonna call us and say like, hey, how you doing? Or how you really doing? Or you need to talk or whatever. And I think that's one thing that I think we forget now because we feel like, oh, I can send them a DM, I can get on Facebook, I go to Instagram or whatever. Sometimes people need a call or if you can, I said a lot of my friends know I will pull up on folks. 
I ain't got no problem. I don't I ain't got no problem putting up on people. So uh I, I just if I feel something or whatever, I will pull up on you now. So uh, but I think all of us need that. We need people that that will be around us and with us, not only just for our good time, but for our bad times too. Um, because we all go through that, just like you know, like we've been talking about different like perspective. So like for me, it's been almost three months now, but like my dad passed in November. So that's been a process for me, but it hasn't been the same as it might've been for somebody else because of that. One, the circumstances. Uh, so if I, if it would have just happened and he hadn't had like health issues over the years, it would have been more of a shock to me or it have been more of a like, like, oh man, like, what, what am I supposed to do with this? So for me, I kind of had a process of like processing the what could happen over the years, but that might have, you know, if it was more sudden and just happened out of the blue, that could have totally put me in a different space. And so that's what I'm saying, like, people can have similar things go on, but for one person, it might be totally devastating. And for another person, it might be difficult, but it it it's manageable for other people. Not, not saying they're better people, but the circumstances might be different or they might be in a different place in their life. Right. So people are affected differently by different things. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, um, we're going to, Kind of, I'm gonna kind of wrap it up. I'm not gonna take up too much of your day, and I, I, I so we certainly appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak with us today about uh, mental health perspective, um, purpose. Um, do you have Do you have any closing thoughts, or, or do you have any? Uh, how, how can people reach you, or do you have any? Do you have a book coming out, or anything like that? So. <laughs> Hopefully by the end of the year, dude, it, it, I had it done. I've been working on it for a minute. Um, but right now I've been doing um I, I have like a blog on Medium where I do articles and stuff on there. And then more kind of like what our conversation being like life purpose, you know, just being more aware about yourself. So I do that. Um, but also I'll be doing some probably like workshops. Uh and also I have like a online course that'll probably be launched soon that's on life purpose and how people kind of go through that journey of figuring out what they want to do with their life what their strengths are and all that kind of stuff so that's something um as well but like i said for me hopefully um some of my said or we'll discuss today help you know I, I i can talk so i don't necessarily know everything if it impacts or connects with people the way it needs to but that's what i always try and do Whenever I talk, I don't try and just I don't I don't really try and talk about myself a whole lot. I just try and make sure what I'm saying connects and resonates and it's kind of people real experiences. Cause I think a lot of people they don't really need to hear like a more clinical kind of conversation about these issues. They need a real time real life conversation and hopefully that's what people got from from me today um and other than that like i said i'm i'm just human like everybody else trying to figure this thing out day by day and uh i just i, I had to do the work on myself um to continue to try and encourage other people and empower them so it's like i'm i'm still working and trying to figure it out trying to be a better person and um uh, and like I said, I just think that's where all of us are. Awesome. Uh, so how can how, how can people reach you uh, if, if if needed? Um. So uh, we you can reach us uh, on Facebook. It's our progress. Um, on Facebook and on Instagram, our progress CC. Um, if you want to connect with me, um, you can connect with me on uh, LinkedIn. Um, it'd be Dr. Terrence Johnson, uh, or you can connect with me on my Medium page. That's uh, at Life Excavator. That's that's the Medium page, um, or 
if you want to just send an email, you can email at uh, info at ourprogresscc.com. And that goes to our main one. Like so I have a business partner, um, Dr. Kendrick Bailey. So um, he does a lot of work with couples and like healthy relationships and all that kind of stuff. So um, he's doing some workshops with that. So if you in a relationship, want to get in a relationship, want to figure that out. Um, he got some workshops, uh, actually got one starting next week, combos with couples. So if you're interested in that, check that out. Um, I think, oh, and if you just want to get to our website, it's uh, www.iprogress.cc. That's the website. So I think I gave all, <laughs> all the links and all that. Yeah, I think I got all of them. I think I got all of them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again, like I said, we certainly most definitely appreciate you. Um, and uh, hopefully, like you said, we gave some good information out to you guys today. Um, more important, most importantly, that, like I said, you are important and reach out. You are you if it's you that that have the issue, understand that you are important and you matter to all of us. Um, and if you if it's not you and, you know, check on your people, check on those who you think are strong Check on those who may be a troublemaker, uh, not to judge, but to at least try to identify where they are. Uh, that that's a start. Um, whether you have the whether you have the resources or not to make a change and change or difference, um, just just know that your 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 existence makes that difference. Start start with that. And so again, Dr. Terrence, Dr. Johnson, we thank you. You have a good day. Oh, no, no, thank, thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're done. Um, we're done. So uh, well, what I'll do is uh, contact you once once, once everything is edited and uh, shoot it to you. And, uh, and hope, hopefully it, it'll be a product that you, 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 you'd you want to share and put out there. Um, okay. Yeah, no no problem. Like I said, hopefully I covered what you wanted. I like that. I know we went some different places. Hopefully, I, hopefully I, I covered what you wanted me to cover. I, I did. I thought about it afterwards. I was like, I didn't think that through enough because I'm thinking that's uh, suicide is so broad, mental health is so broad. I mean, it covers so many areas. And I was, I was sitting here thinking, wow, man, we could go. And I was like, how do, how do we narrow this? I, I should have thought a, a more narrow focus uh, is what I was thinking. So we're not all over the place, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that. Uh, we, we, we enough was said because you gave some important important information important topics points i mean so i and i certainly appreciate it yeah because yeah, I, I was sitting here thinking about i got a cousin I, was a I got a cousin that's in the hospital right now so uh on suicide watch that's what made me think about it and i was thinking what would i say to him or how could i use this information to help him so uh, that that's that's what i was thinking about. yeah yeah, but anyway, well, thank you for your time. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, you have a good day. All right. Maybe we'll contact you. All right. Now you.